Our Gospel reading for Easter Sunday. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Join me in the call to worship. The Lord is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Our second lesson this morning is from Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When the one who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Christ in glory. This is our sacred text. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? God of grace, God of life, we ask that you would help us today and every day to understand how important it is that life in you continues. Help us to live into the resurrection. Amen. Easter Sunday. Historically, it was always the most important part of the new year for Christians. Good Friday actually came later. Christmas came much later. But Easter was always the central part of what it meant to live as a Christian. But what do we make of the resurrection? For too many Christians, it's simply a time of thinking about you and me, God. We got it. You got me, I got you, I'm good. Because we need that assurance that we, individuals, we are saved. And we don't necessarily have to include others in that faith. And it is both comforting and encouraging to have this hope of a resurrection that somehow we know after we die in this body, our life will go on. What a comfort it is when we lose a loved one at this time of crisis with the pandemic or any other time to talk about our loved ones going to be with Jesus. And we remember the words of Jesus even on Good Friday, today you will be with me in paradise. And truly that does give us a comfort. And it is also encouraging for us to know that no matter what the quantity or quality of our life is, that there is something better yet to come. We will know that the time that we have here, whether it has been filled with many good things or it has been a time of constant suffering, this time will be nothing compared to the glory that is to come. That gives us courage to live this life, continuing to be the best we can be, continuing to live out that faith that says we should be creating good things in this world. So yes, the idea that we are going to be raised again after we die, that there is going to be an afterlife that is going to be in glory, that's going to give us comfort and that's going to give us courage. But none of that is what Paul is talking about when he wrote to the Colossians. He doesn't mention an afterlife. He says, so if you have been raised with Christ, if you have been raised with Christ, that is a kind of unique phrase, isn't it? Because it doesn't ask us to go back to check to see if we have been raised with Christ. It's actually pointing us forward. If you have been raised with Christ, then these things will follow. This is what your life is going to be like. And it's going to be like that here and now. So he doesn't talk about after you die and you're going to be raised again. He doesn't talk about go back and make sure that you're good with God, make sure you've been raised with Christ. He talks about how you're going to live now. And if we were going to follow the rest of what he says in Colossians, we're going to see that he talks to us about putting aside malice. And he talks about living an authentic life, not one full of impurities and not full of idolatry. And he sig signal signals out especially the idolatry of greed. If we have been living our life claiming for it to be good because it has been filled with wealth or power, then he says, that's not the resurrected life. That's not a life that is in Christ. That's 
life in idolatry. He points instead to those who have clothed themselves with Christ, those who have put aside malice, who have put aside envy. And he says, therefore, clothe yourself with love that binds everything together. That, you see, is the proof of whether or not you're living in the resurrection. That's the proof that would follow. So if you have been raised with Christ, is that you have been transformed. That's why you often hear me talking about the butterfly that has to totally commit inside that cocoon, inside that dark place, totally commit to a transformation. It will be the same DNA, but it will be a totally new creature that comes out. And so when we are metamorphosed, metamorphosized, when we have been changed so thoroughly, we are living into the resurrection. And then our life is not being based on greed. It is not being based on earthly things. It's being based on spiritual things. What are our values? What is our hope? How do we express, above all, our love? If we have been raised with Christ, we, have been put, we are putting on love. And we are therefore living with forgiveness. We can set aside our grievances. And we can know that even though we have made mistakes, God still loves us. And we can confess our sins to one another. And we can know that whether our family, whether our other human beings can forgive us, God has forgiven us and wants us to go on in a new life, a new life that is then led by Christ, through Christ who has demonstrated to us how to love everyone, how to accept everyone. For Christ is all in all. That's the way Paul described it to the Colossians. And he said, in this new life, it is not Greek and Jew. It is not circumcised and uncircumcised. It is not Scythian and barbarian. It is not slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. So we make no distinctions anymore between one another. If we're going to be living into the resurrection, we're going to be living with a new mindset. And that mindset is going to dictate for us a new life. A new life that has as its core value, love. And that expresses itself in song, songs of joy, that is ruled by the peace of God. Now those are not just light phrases. They can become cliches for us because we use them so much in our church language. But when we're talking about living with the peace of God, we're talking about understanding our place in the whole span of life. We have a beginning and an end. We know that basically our life on earth, if we were mathematicians, had to be described as a line segment. It has a beginning and it has an end. But it is only a part of the continuous line of life. And that continuous life is in God. That continuous life is what Christ has been revealing to us. And it is empowered and transformed by love. By the love that constantly seeks the goodness for ourselves, for our world, and for one another. And so to live in the peace of God is to understand this is my place. My life in the resurrection has given me this time and this place, has given me these opportunities to express love to other people, these opportunities to create a better world. And so we live into that peace of God. And we express that joy that we have in doing so by singing, by praising, by teaching others what we have learned from our Christ. It doesn't come out in the form of commandments. 
It comes out in word and deed. In word and deed. And the word is not just vocalizations. The word as we understand it, the logos that we talk about when we talk about Jesus being the word of God. That word is revealing the heart and the mind of God. So our words are revealing what is in us. And when they are the words that are also the words of Christ, they're revealing the heart and mind of God. The heart and mind that says, you and you and you are loved. And there is no one to be rejected. And there is no one that will be sent away. For all are welcome. All are covered by God's grace. And so we talk about Christ dying for all. We talk about the power of the resurrection being there for all. Not just a chosen few. Not just a few that can live according to certain precepts outlined by our traditions. But all are loved as they are. And then they are called to live authentically. They're not called to live restricted, but to be authentic in their life. That their expressions of love are just as welcome as other expressions of love. That they are called to live that life that God has given them, as God has created them. And so we live into that resurrection that calls each and every one of us to live authentic lives that are expressions of God's love. Because then we are living in the resurrection. Then we know what it means to live a life that really is not going to end because it is going to be creating a love that will be passed on and will continue to go on. It will be creating a life here that is an expression of the one who gives life for all, who continues to give life, and that life is never ending. Living into our resurrection, if we have been raised with Christ, we're transformed to be new creatures, to live everyone equally, not separating one from another. That's our call in the resurrection. That's the life that gives us comfort and courage and joy and peace because it is a love that is lived out fully in God's love. Amen.
In our prayers this morning, we include prayers for our world, for we are not the only ones caught up in this pandemic. It has truly spread around the world. And the pandemic has not just affected us according to our health. It affects our economics. It has even affected our environment, although a little bit ironically, the environment has gotten a reprieve as human activities has been lessened. But it does affect us all. And we realize that there are still people dealing with the loss of loved ones. We know that there are still people dealing with the loss of occupations, of loss of income, struggling because there are no jobs that they can go to. We know that there are still people suffering from human violence. And so we include those who are sequestered at home, but home is not a safe place. We bring all these prayers to our God as we pray. God of life and God of love, we ask that you would hold each and every one of us in your hands constantly reassuring us that though our bodies are mortal, that we fear the loss of health, we fear the loss of life for ourselves and for our loved ones. We place all these things into your hands, and there we can find a source of strength, a peace that passes understanding, and the assurance that life in you is a life that does not end, but endures. That your love might permeate our thoughts, our faith, our hopes. Grant then your success to those who are on the front lines at this time. Those who work in medical fields with the training and the passion to be there to help those who are ill, risking their own lives in the process. Hold them especially close to your heart. Give them the courage and the success to go on. We also think of others who are in essential services, from truck drivers and grocery store workers, construction workers, and the emergency services. We ask that you would help them to know that your love is there for them as they do what they can, even also risking their own health to help the public, to help nameless faces perhaps, but people who need what they do to continue. Especially we ask that you help us as we are confined to our homes Help us to find ways to let love be prominent. Help us to find ways to express that love in the times when we are restricted. And for those who are in places where there is abuse, help them to find a way out through transformation or for escape, whatever route they need to take. Help them to realize that abuse is not your will for them, that they can leave and find life where there are people who accept and love them as they are. We pray all these petitions in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our announcements, I would like to say when this is going to be over, when we, re when we can return to be together in this sanctuary.
though we don't know when that will be. And so our face-to-face -face meetings have been canceled or they have to be done over the electronic media of some kind. So we thank you for keeping yourself safe, respecting the lives of others as well by the stay at home, by sequestering. We thank you also and ask your support for those who are in the line of fire and we remember them always. Find ways to reach out to them, to let them know that email or that text or that phone call, anything that helps them to understand they are not forgotten as they struggle in their lives. So call one another, especially your loved ones and your fellow members. Let's not forget to be the church.
We thank you for your gifts and your donations that have come, that we hope will continue to come to support the ministry, that we can continue to be the church, encouraging one another. So we ask God to bless the offerings that have come and that will come. Would you pray with me? Ever giving God, we thank you for the life that you have given us, for the abundance of that life and the assurance that it is lived fully in your love. We therefore ask that you would bless our offerings that we give with grateful hearts, that they might be used to help others to understand what it means to live into the resurrection and have the peace of Christ rule in us and have your love binding us together. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And now we go always, going forward with the God who we know is love, with the Spirit that enlightens and encourages us along the way, and with the Christ that has proven that it is possible to live into a love and live fully in the resurrection. Amen.